Hey guys, in this video, we are going to take a look at the vertex displacement shader. So by the word vertex displacement, we know that we are going to offset or displace the vertices of the mesh using a shader. And now you can see on my screen that I have two planes. The left one has about 10 by 10 subdivisions and the right one, which is this one, has about 50 by 50 subdivisions. Now these both meshes are created in Blender and uh, because of that, we see that uh, they have a different coordinate system. So before we start all of this, let's quickly take a look at why do we require vertex displacement? So this is Microsoft's uh, Flight Simulator. And while I was playing this game, I came across a couple of things. Like if you keep noticing this area, uh, there are some LOD changes. And uh, also uh, these terrains are uh, created using displacement maps. Right, so this is one of the use cases where you know if you have an application or a game and you want to create open world terrains or terrains of any kind or sort, you can use this kind of a technique and mix it up with uh, various other techniques like tessellation. Uh, another thing that I wanted to show you is this ocean shader. So this is another practical example where you can use vertex shaders. You can use this uh, input or this calculation, uh, which is called fast Fourier transforms, and you can plug this into the water's mesh, and based on that, you can have waves generated. So this is something which is really interesting, and there are many more applications of these shaders. Um, next thing that I also want to talk about is, if you must have seen this video on the channel, I wanted to show you the, the implementation of tessellation shader along with the vertex shader. That means as the camera moves further, closer to the terrain, you get more detail. So if you see here, as the camera goes closer to the terrain, we have more density, more tessellation. And as the camera moves away, we have less tessellation and the level of detail automatically reduces. So this is something interesting and uh, these kind of phenomena are generally used in uh, uh, games and all. So this is why I want to uh, create a video on the vertex displacement. So in this, there are two main things. We are going to take a look at how to create this using the shader graph as well as how you can code it. So the first thing that we're going to take a look at is how you can create this using shader graph. So I'm going to go to the shaded mode and uh, I have already applied a shader, which is made in shader graph. And we have these properties, which is the displacement map, the displacement value. So if I reduce this, it goes down. If I increase this, it goes up. And then we have a color map. And if you would like to flip the Y and Z axis. So because, you know, sometimes you get uh, meshes from software like Blender, whereas you have then built meshes, so you can give a nice option where you can toggle. So how do you create the shader? Let's go to the shader graph. As we saw, we have these properties. We have a displacement map. We have a displacement multiplier. We have a color map and flip X, Y, Z. So it's very simple and straightforward. What we have to do is, I want to just maximize this. Yeah. So what we have to do is we take the displacement map and we just take the R channel because displacement map usually is similar to the alpha map, which has a grayscale range of values, which goes from zero to one. Uh, and then we use a multiplier to give an offset to the vertices. Now in the example that I showed you uh, where the extrusion was done along the Y axis, we just take this and we increment the vertices or add the offset to the vertices in the object space. Now, why do we want to add the uh, offset in the object spaces? Because that's the local space that is local to the object itself. That means if you ever have to go ahead and apply any world space transformations or any other transformations that come later on. So we have this uh, map from which we extract the R value and multiply it with the displacement. Now we have two vector values. Why do we have two vector values is because if we have a mesh which is created in Blender or which is created in a coordinate system which has Z up, then we offset the Z of the vertices. So X and Y become zero. And if we have, you know, a different coordinate system like Y up, which is the Unity's coordinate system, for example, 
then we increment or offset the vertices in the y axis and x and z become zero. So hence, if we have to flip the y z, we use this vector. And if we don't want to flip, which is the unity's case, use this vector. Then we have the position node and make sure to change it to object space and then add this. So you add the offset and then just plug this value into the position of the vertex shader. So this is your vertex shader. And then if you want to add a color map, like a texture for the terrain, you can just uh, use a sample 2D and uh, add it to the base color. One thing that you have to note is that the sample texture here versus the sample texture here are different. This is because this is sample texture 2D LOD, which means when you are sampling the texture for the vertices, because rasterization has not taken place yet, then you cannot sample points between two vertices. So wherever your vertex lies on this map, that UV will be sampled, all right? And that is a major reason why this object that has more density will have more detail than the object which has less density because these vertices, now I'll just plug in this map right here. So if you see the amount of data that is being read, right? is more when the vertex uh, or the mesh density is higher. So this is one thing which is a major drawback. And uh, that is because rasterization does not happen before the vertex shading. It happens later on. So that is quite and that is how you make this shader in shader graph. Now, if you have to make the same shader using SLSL, then what you have to do is basically we are going to just take uh, this uh, HLSL file and drag and drop it in this. And I think I changed this, right? So I'm going to use the same terrain, this one, and give the same value. There we go. So that's the shader for us. Now, the way you write the shaders in HLSL is almost similar to the way you were writing shaders in CG. A couple of things have changed, but not much. So you have the properties block and we have a couple of properties like we have the base map, displacement map and displacement multiplier. And then we have a toggle which is for flipping the Y and C uh, plane. So you have a base map, you have a displacement map and then you have a displacement multiplier. Oh, that is too, too much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then you have the flip Y and Z. Okay. Now we go back to the code and see that we have these, uh, textures and samplers here. And then in the C buffer, we have also the tanning offset as well as the displacement and flip YZ Boolean mentioned. So this is the same way that we used to do for the CG shader. Now this is your vertex shader and the vertex shader basically is uh, dependent on the attributes, which is this structure, which has the position and object space. Like we always used to get position object space and the UE. And the variants basically are the input to the fragment shader. So we'll talk about the vertex shader first. So what we used to do in shader graph, we are just going to put it right here, but in code, that means we are going to first uh, sample the UVs uh, right here. Second, we create a, uh, basically we extract the position from the texture, which is the displacement map, which is uh, using the same sample texture 2D LOD in which we have a displacement map, displacement map sampler, the UVs, and you can put in one or zero. You can have multiple, uh, you know, you can check out the uh, LOD level that you want for this. And you just take the R term, and then you multiply it by the displacement multiply. Now what next thing you need to do is, uh, you have to copy this in dot position, basically the object space position into a new uh, variable. And if it is flipping, then you have to increment or add offset to the Z or else you just have to add offset to the Y, right? If it is not flipping. And finally, you have the clip space position, which is transform object to H clip using uh, basically the new uh, position, which is the modified offset or the space position. And in the fragment shader, we just sample the base map. And if you see, again, we have a difference here. This is LOD and this is texture 2D. So that yields this result. And you can start using displacement map. So 
if you want you can also apply these with lods like for example this is 10 by 10 this is 50 by 50 so whenever you have a big open world game that you're creating you can use these concepts where you know you can overlap these or create lods out of these and whenever the user is far you can show this lod and whenever the user goes near very near to it you can show this uh, lod so higher LOD. So that is it for this video and I hope you found this video informative. Thank you so much for watching the video.